Hi, and thanks for joining me on a super special edition of One Guy, Three Gals, and a Hell of a Lot of Rosé. <laughs> I want to uh, really welcome both all my guests today because they're all special guests. I have Ashley Lebro. Ashley, you've been on this show before. Mm -hmm. We know you're uh, a wine lover. Yes. We have Renee McHugh. This is your first time on the show. Yes, I am. Yes. And we have Carolyn Topol, who I've had the pleasure of being on her show, Carolyn oh. Talks Television. Okay. And she is now on our show. And uh, hopefully we can introduce her to some interesting rosés. I hope so. On this episode. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. So it is rosé parte episode. And Jim, you're really <laughs> missing a good one. And uh, rosés are everywhere right now. They were everywhere a few years ago. I want to say that me and Jim were in the forefront about nine years ago pushing rosés. And now they seem to be everywhere. Yeah. And uh, we have four mm -hmm. to sample today, including a nice little surprise near the end from uh, Essie, which I think you're going to like. <laughs> and they're not in the front of the table like they normally are, because I didn't want to block these beautiful ladies' faces Aww. on and the short camera. And ladies. <laughs> so <laughs> I will be bringing them out as we start the tasting. Yeah. And I know this has been sitting for a while, and I want to tell people what we're drinking first. I've never had this one on the show, I believe. We've done so many, well, almost 300 wines. It's Philippe, Philippe de Giros, and it's a Brut Rosé from the southern region of France. It's a sparkling. And it's one of my favorites. It's available down near the Stamford, Norwalk area, but if you looked online, you might be able to find it. Fantastic light rosé. As I like to explain to rosés, the lighter it is, it's like a soft kiss on the cheek, and the darker the rosé, it's like a deep French kiss. So okay. this is a nice light rosé, <laughs> okay. beautiful light color, as you can see in the glass. And we're drinking in these type of glasses because, as I've been told, all year from the wine experts, this is the way to drink bubbles now. Flutes uh, narrow the flavor profile. All you're really getting is the bubbles and the effervescence. You're not really smelling the wine. This is the old style, the way they used to drink them back in the turn of the century. The wine has ability to open up. And, and champagne or sparkling is just like a red wine or a white wine. You want to be able to smell it as you drink it. So hopefully everybody's going to enjoy this first one. And okay. If not, just tell me you hate it. And I'll start down there at the end with you, Essie. Oh, I see do like it. I like the fruitiness of it. I really enjoy it, and I usually don't like bubbles. And Very that really, because it's really light, and it's really, just the flavor is just so nice and bright. And what, and Renee, what do you think? Yeah, so the, the bubbles aren't intense. It's got a nice mellow. Um, I also want to say like a creamy kind of smooth. There is a little creaminess. That's, okay. it's, it's sort of yeah. a light strawberry-esque. But it's a brute, because I really only like a brute champagne or bubbles. I don't like okay. overly sweet wine. A lot of people think rosés are always sweet, mm -hmm. and that's definitely not the case, as, mm -hmm. as Essie can attest to. Um, but this particular one is very dry. And this has been sitting uh, in the studio for that's about 25 time. minutes. Yeah. And even at this temperature, I think it's still complex enough to be enjoyable to drink. You know, whether you're, I mean, you're going to be watching the show in June. It's summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, sitting on your porch or patio at the beach, this is perfect on the back porch. Good. I would yeah. love to have a reason to come and take some of this outside on my backyard and just sit with that. That would be yeah. really nice. Yeah. And uh, you, you can find this, like I said, look online. Um, this is available in the uh, Stamford, Norwalk area. Um, but you might be able to find it in a local shop if you ask or have them order it, like the Wise Old Dog, Max's. Um, they love trying to get stuff that's good. And they all taste their stuff when they order it. And this is up there with some of the reasonably priced ones. Okay. This is between 11 and 14.99. And uh, for a sparkling French bubbles, I think that's a phenomenal price. That's fun. You can buy a lot of those. Fun, yeah. yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Which that's I'm, a lot less than I would have thought it was. Yeah, actually, sparkling, any of a sparkling wine in general, you're going to get a little bit lower price than actual champagne because you have to have the champagne uh, for legal purposes on French champagne. The price is usually can't get under 40 or 50 bucks for real good champagne. Okay. But sparkling, they're still made in French, they're still made the same way, mm -hmm. but they're not made in the champagne region. So mm -hmm. they have to be called sparkling. So I'm going to give that a thumbs up. I'm biased, but I love that one. Yeah, okay. very good. Yeah. Now, Renee right. and Carolyn are still little oh. drinks in their oh, glass. Oh, we have to get rid of it? But you do not have to chug it on the show. <laughs> Responsible tasting. You can pour it if, you're, if you feel like I'm, it. I'm going to pour because... Uh, I'm not. I, <laughs> That's okay. Because I'm usually a lightweight drinker, so mm. considering I do want to get home later, mm. I'll probably have to sit in the studio for half hour as it is after the show. <laughs> <laughs> now, coming up next is Essie's one. If Essie, you want to talk about it a little bit first, I'll start to... We actually, why don't we start pouring down that end? Oh, okay. Let me pass that down sure. there. Yeah. 
And what could you tell us about this one? Uh, this one is um, a uh, rosé made by John Bon Jovi and his son, along with a French uh, producer, um, Gerard. Gerard Bertrand, yes. Bertrand, and um, it's a it's a light it's a light rosé. And uh, so we thought, just for fun, I'd bring it on and see, because it's apparently been very popular. It's a product um, of France. Okay. It is a French rosé, that's true, yeah. even though it's uh, John Bon Jovi. I, he teamed with Gerard Bertrand, and I've had his stuff on the show in the years past, mm -hmm. and I love Gerard Bertrand's wines. Yes. Yes. And this is what my story was a short time ago when I said a light rosé. This would be the, the soft kiss on the cheek, because mm -hmm. it's a light, the grapes aren't left in as long. You get a beautiful light. Oh, it's almost like a light salmon color. It's not a dark right. salmon color, mm -hmm. which is what I love to see in a, in a rosé because I'm pretty sure when you see that, it's going to be on the drier side mm -hmm. and it's not going to be overly sweet. And that's a big plus for me. So. And I think his son went in, in on this uh, business as a just as a hoot to see, oh, let's make some wine. And it, it was very popular. So now they're producing it all over the country. And yeah. it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, we, diving into Hampton water, though, is an unusual name, but... It is, and um, we talked about it earlier, the little bubble on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a strawberry. It's, it's a beautiful bottle. Yeah. And I, you should never buy a bottle of wine based on how pretty the bottle is always. But or in this label. case, or the label. <laughs> or pretty label. In this case, so, um, <laughs> like, it's, it's a beautiful bottle. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And yeah, this is a little on the pricier side for rosé. I generally, myself personally, don't pay more than 20 to $25 for rosé. This is up right at the top, right? 25 Yes. Yes. All right, I'm going to go in my first tasting of... Jean Bon Jovi Rosé. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Very mild bouquet, which I like. I get actually a little apricot on that. Take a second sip, though, because like I said the other night when we were taste testing it, mm. the first one was a little biting, I thought, but then the second one was totally different. Were you eating with this? Um, we did have, we had some um, hummus, and actually that probably was hummus and cheese and crackers, but. It almost tastes like a, a Chardonnay. You know how a Chardonnay can be like tart? In the yeah. first, in the first sip? Yeah. It was first two, anyway. <laughs> See, no, I don't find that. I found it really quite lovely. I really do like dry wine. Yes. So I'm finding this mm -hmm. one of, uh, a kind of rosé that I would probably really oh. go for. I do get a little bit of apricot and a little bit of honey, but not a, a cloying honey. No. A very mild. Mm, yeah. Perfect, once again, my idea of a really nice summer, spring, mm -hmm. summer rosé. Um, and this isn't super cold, which it shouldn't be because there's character in this rosé. Mm -hmm. uh, the only wines you really should drink super cold are like Pinot Grigio where, you know, it's, there's not a lot of character in the, in the actual mm -hmm. wine. This is fine almost at room temperature, which mm -hmm. is a good example oh, of. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, good rosés will taste good even at room temperature. Mm -hmm. There should be a little chill to them, but it's not necessary. Some of the really cheap rosés, they can be a little acidic, so right. sometimes you need a little chill to, to okay. balance that out. Okay. But uh, this would be a, a, another great summer wine. Mm -hmm. you now you talked about a summer wine, and I was just wondering, um, I'm one of those folks who I like wine. Um, mm -hmm in general and if I'm in the mood for a red I'll drink a red if I'm in the mood for a rosé I'll drink a rosé are there is truly still rules about what you should order with certain foods like what would be better well as Jim always says and uh, we disagree a little bit but he says you drink what you like yeah. okay. doesn't matter what you're eating yeah. are certain wines I know SE you're a big mm -hmm. foodie like me you go out a lot there are certain wines that do taste better with different mm -hmm. types of food. Like what would you, for example, yeah. suggest this be served with? R rosés are fantastic with uh, spicy food. Any type of Thai food, Thai food. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chinese food. No, would have never thought of that, okay? Yep. I, truly. Lemony type, like a lemony barbecue dish. Chicken. Um, when you start getting Maybe to the red barbecue, you know, I would still drink that with a barbecue mm -hmm. okay. because this mm -hmm. is a summer wine. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. You're going to be having barbecue. Right. A rosé, there's nothing wrong with a rosé for a barbecue. Oh, okay. I, that is... See, I would have never guessed that at all. I would have thought those would have needed stronger flavors. They, they can. But once again, and I'll repeat what Jim says, drink what you like. Mm -hmm. Because okay. why would you just get a wine just because it's going to pair be better with a meal? But if you don't like the wine, it's going to affect mm -hmm. the way you're enjoying your meal. Okay. So I would stick to what you like most of the time. There are some rare exceptions, like if you're eating really spicy food like I like. Sometimes you might want a Riesling, a little on the sweeter mm -hmm. side, to really cut that hotness. Right to out. balance. To, to balance. balance. Yes. You, you will sort of need that. Red wine's not going to be very good. With no, it really. no. If you like your food spicy, then you have to do a little bit of play with the wine that you're drinking. 
you have to bump up the acidity or sweetness a little bit just to balance the heat. No, I'm more of a seasoned but not spicy kind of a diner. Yep. So I would get the not spicy versions of many foods. That sounds like my wife, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Seasons make a difference too. You're sitting outside, the sun's yeah, shining, it's true. warm out, yes. and this is great. Um, and in the winter time, I, I go away from that and I'll, and I'll drink yeah. a red, a Cabernet yeah. or something. Sure. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's hearty, right. it's warm. Right. It, it you know, feels richer. Earthy, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, deeper. Like I said, I, I'm a still a strong proponent of rosés all year round, mm -hmm. but obviously when it's a little colder, you want a little bit more firmness or strength in your wine. But uh, I have a say, I say, I really like that a lot. And where where did you find this one? Great, great. This was at Maximum Beverage in, in Farmington. And did he just bring this in or just spend on the shelf? He had around? it. He had it. Yeah. Phenomenal. Hmm. All right. So everybody's glass is almost empty. I'm going to finish this one. It's huh? nice with cheese. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, okay. <laughs> there was some cheese. Yeah, generally I do pair wines on the show with cheeses and some light sausages. Um, to me, cheeses go with every good wine. Mm -hmm. I mean, wine just goes great with cheese. It doesn't matter. Um, but it's always a good way if you're going to do a tasting yourself at home to always have a little bit of cheese or some dry crackers just so you can cleanse your palate before you go to the next one. Now, an olive, will that cleanse my palate? Uh, or will that mess it up? It might not cleanse it, but it tastes it, damn it, good. It'll enhance, <laughs> it'll enhance the flavor it of the will. wine. Okay, because mm -hmm. anybody who knows me knows if I see a black olive and it's just sort of within <laughs> reach, I just go for it. <laughs> to go for it right And I now. almost toyed with bringing a Spanish wine, a Spanish mm -hmm. rosé. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't um, want to come to I didn't yeah, think we'd have time to go through five wines, but I, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. But I like Spanish rosés, mm -hmm. too. They can be a little on the firmer, acidic side, mm -hmm. which sometimes is good, um, but not sweet. So two thumbs up Thank early you. on. So that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. using the Bobby P. philosophy of as we get darker, the kissing becomes a little bit more intense. Okay. So it's closer to the lips now. So we can see a darker rosé. And as, as I love Italian wine, I've been waiting for to say this. So this is, this is Fatini Farnese from Sarasulo di Abruzzo. Okay. And the Montepulciano region <laughs> yeah. of Italy. And how could you not love saying Montepulciano? It just comes right out. So this is a nice, darker red rosé. So when you start moving up to these types, I'll let uh, Essie start pouring down that okay. end. When you start getting into this color of rosé, it's going to be a little bit stronger, a little bit more character because the grape is left in a little bit longer. So it's giving, you get a little bit more flavor from the grape mm -hmm. varietal. And uh, Italian rosés, just like much, much of Italian wines in general, are meant to be drank. Uh, they're not as stuffy as French wines, and I love French wines. Mostly all Italian wines are made to be drank, and they drink them every day. Mm -hmm. And this particular one, and I wanted to bring stuff that Essie couldn't get because I didn't say this earlier, but um, <laughs> Essie was very generous. She yet again won our auction item at the WHC TV uh -huh. gala at the Pond House this year. Congratulations. For, Actually, Rob did, but oh, I, I, I'm the substitute. Rob, I'm sorry. Not yes, Rob did, Rob did win it. You took one for the team. <laughs> right. Okay. I had to take one for the team. That's right. <laughs> and uh, that included a, a nice international basket of yes. wine and some gadgets and an appearance on the show. And I think this is your third appearance on the show. Second. Second. Second appearance? I'll do a third. Just <laughs> And I wanted to get something that you can't get locally. So the two that we're going to finish up on tonight are from my wine club that I got sent to me. Mm -hmm. So these you can do some searching online. The Fantini, just type in Fantini, uh, do a little Google search, you can come up with that. This is between $15, $17, $99. It starts getting up there higher mm -hmm. in the price point. And uh, one thing we didn't talk about, which I like to always talk about, is the alcohol content in rosés. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one, even though it's darker, is only 12.5. Mm -hmm. I believe Renee's is 13, 13 yeah. and mm -hmm. the sparkling is usually always lower, so that's 11.5. So even though the wine is darker, mm -hmm. it's not always a telltale sign that's going to be more alcohol in the wine. Mm -hmm. But it should be a little bit more flavorful than the lighter wine, and we're about to find out. Now, okay. does it, do, would you let it breathe, or is it not necessary? It's, <sighs> you know, oh, yeah. nothing that's white or rosé-ish needs to breathe mm -hmm. in general. Um, can you let it sit to get room temperature? Yes. Does it need to breathe? No. And uh, actually, we'll talk about my little gadget here later on if we have time. I taste melon. I like mm. this. It's very nice. Mm. This is probably a more acidic one that we've had the first two. Mm. This is the upper palate. This is, it sort of hits you on the upper palate and the lower mm. palate. It tastes, for my wording, which is very... Inaccurate, usually. No, I'm there's sorry no such thing as inaccurate. Um, it tastes very much richer. Like there's a, a, a heavier flavor to it, and it's, that's not bad. 
It's just like it's a stronger flavor. Like I would see this in comparison to a red, I would take that possibly. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess for an example, and I'm a person who does like red wines. Um, when you start getting the darker rosés, you're getting closer and closer to the red, mm -hmm. like a Pinot okay. Noir almost. The darker the color, That was the almost more. what I was thinking. I yeah. was going to say that because that's something I do enjoy is Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hmm, that's was kind of getting close to that. It's, it's yeah. that heavier, but not in a bad way, heavier flavor. Yeah, and when you go into the store, because right now when you go into a wine store, rosés are everywhere. Mm -hmm. They have them on end caps. They have all aisles not devoted to rosés. And it can be very confusing because most people, they look at the colors, and the colors of rosés, as, as you know, can be very just like... like blush, peach. Yeah. Well, peach. It, just those three right. bottles alone have three very different colors to sure. them. Yeah. Yeah. And I will, from my perspective, and Jim is the more technical aspect of this, he may or may not agree with me. He's not here, though, so he has, he has to listen to me, <laughs> is the darker the red, the richer, or the darker the rosé, the richer the rosé. The lighter the color, the lighter the mm -hmm. rosé. That doesn't mean the flavors aren't going to be as powerful or as, mm -hmm. is, is um, pronounced in a light rosé. It just means it's not quite as effort or not as um, powerful on your palate. Mm -hmm. The lighter the color, as you move to the dark, it's a little bit more like like you said, uh, Carolyn. This is almost drinks a little bit more like a red it, for your palate. For my palate, yep. yes. And it's not a combination of red grapes, white grapes. It's how long they keep. The wine How long they're fermented? The skins, in the, in yep. the skins. So. Yep, absolutely. And uh, I know you talked quickly, uh, briefly, about aerating particular wines. As a rule, you only aerate, aerate red wines. And uh, I think uh, the camera could probably see this. This is uh, the Homier Stemless Aerating Wine Glass. And if you see the cover of the box, it's exactly what happens when you pour the wine <laughs> in. And uh, I, I would probably, let me do a quick demonstration. I'm not going to be taking this wine home, so you ladies are. It's pretty. So when you pour it in the top. <laughs> That's very nice. You can see how the wine, there's small holes. It aerates the wine, and then you're left with this wonderful little sipping part in the bottom. It's designed more for red wine because um, you don't really need to aerate uh, a rosé. But I've tried this several times over the last several weeks with red wine. It, it does make a difference. I've actually done it in the glass. Then I've had a separate glass with a red, and there is a difference. Mm -hmm. So I would strongly recommend looking this up. They're $39.99, I believe, for the pair. Um, but if you love your wine and you, you don't want to wait 30 minutes for a bottle to breathe, mm -hmm. this is a great way to go. And you drink right from that, by the and way. And you would drink right from yep. this, yeah. exactly. Right. And it doesn't and, spill and it's over. A, you. And it's okay you not to. It's in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it, and it's okay not to have a stem on the glass, because I've always was taught, oh, if you touch uh, the glass, it's a big deal. Oh, no. You change the temperature. No, actually, in Italy, most all winers drink in these type of glasses. Is that right? Oh, was, I think really? you were in Italy, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's, yeah. they drink in, in these type of glasses, mm -hmm. smaller version. Um, but there aren't really stems in the, for a lot of places. Okay. Really. You don't need them. Um, talk about a little bit about the sweetness, because some people assume that ro the darker rosé, the sweeter. That's not that's not the case. Definitely it's, not. It's the type of grape. No. The zins tend to be sweeter. It is. I mean, a lot of times moscatos are sweeter. That's you gotta, sweet, yeah. Whenever you see something called moscato, just yeah. you're going to get a sweet one. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, a lot of people just know that, but some people don't know that. Mm -hmm. But it looks like a rosé. Right. So some people say, well, there's a rosé, but it's got the moscato label right. on it. Well, let me tell you, it's going to be sweet. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like sweet wine. Don't buy it because you're not going to like it. If you like sweet wine, it's just a, another lighter version of a ro of a rosé, mm -hmm. but it's still sweet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've I'm not a big strong liker of sweet wine, so I, t I tend to stay away from moscatos. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But the grape variety, like a Zin, they make rosés out of the Zinfandel grape. But if that grape is left in a little too long, you're going to have a very powerful, right. semi-sweet sweet rosé, mm -hmm. and that's just not for my palate. So. I still would say when you're looking at rosés, judge it by color and from varietal where it comes mm -hmm. from. French rosés that are this color, um, or even a little darker, are never going to be sweet. I've never had a, a very sweet French rosé. Italian rosés can be, but in general, <clears throat> not really. Portuguese, which we're going to get to, mm -hmm. I'm going to this one, it's my first time drinking this one. Um, so this is going to be really interesting. Uh, it's also the darkest one I think we have tonight. And uh, Portuguese wines are huge right now. I, I think uh, my, my guests know and my audience knows that Jim's actually in the, in the wine business with Portuguese wine now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it started off as a small market in the Boston area, of course, because it's a big Portuguese population. But it's quickly spreading because they're inexpensive and there's some great wines to be mm -hmm. had. So this is Jim's 
one of Jim's uh, wines, and this is, I'll let Renee, uh, Essie start pouring down there. Okay. I'm going to let you pass <coughs> that because I want to finish this one. Okay. <laughs> I like this I really one. noticed with each of these, you know, whites and reds, they have more of a nose, more fragrant. Are you going to pour them? Oh, thank you. Take a moment to, to smell them. These don't so much. No, most rosés won't, just like most okay. basic whites won't. I mean, Chardonnays will have a little. Yeah. Um, but a rosé shouldn't have too big of a room, but it should be somewhat floral. It's, you still should have somewhat of a floor, which is why these kind of glasses, and by the way, this is Silgurios, Torriga, and Oregonas. And those are the, I'm sorry, the, the two, three, two grapes that are made out of this one are the Torriga and the Oregonas. And those two grapes are very unusual because not many people know about them. And I don't know much about them. And, but they've been growing these grape varietals in uh, Portugal for a very long time. So... Is the alcohol content the highest Yeah, this on is, this one? no, this is 13, yes it is. Yeah, I, I, I can tell. <laughs> yes it is. Just looking at it, yeah. Yeah. Now you said the smell doesn't really sort of, this one has, to me, the least aroma of the three. It does have the least aroma, you're right. Because the other three I was sort of saying, yeah. nice. I think it has a stronger flavor though. Okay, here goes. But this one feels flat. I'm not crazy about this one. I don't know. I like the others better. I do too. Yeah. I, I'm sort of not tasting much of yeah. anything, yeah. but... It is kind of flat. <clears throat> this is yeah. probably the, uh, yeah. a version of, it's not sweet though. No. But no. But it's, it's definitely flat. There's not a lot of character in this particular one, which is kind of surprising to me because it's so red. So I'm a little surprised mm -hmm. that there's a little bit I, more. I guess I expected it to be sort of sweet. So did I. You if not a, sweet, then a little bit more powerful. How many sips did you have? Two. Yeah, because the second one was a little bit better, All right. the second sip, but... Um, and what you eat with it can yeah. sometimes. I just had a piece of, of, of some <coughs> meat. Before. If you have something salty, maybe yeah. might enhance it a bit. Or this might be one of those examples where this might be a rosé that is made to be drank with food. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting down, especially with something salty, um, mm. whether it's crackers or cheese or you're doing a charcuterie, this might actually work pretty well. I don't think I can drink most of the stuff on this table. I can drink right out of the bottle, sitting on my back porch. <laughs> Without any food. Deck drinking. Yes, deck it. drinking. <laughs> this okay. particular one. Um, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I think I would need something to pair with it. Mm -hmm. So, what's interesting though is it's probably our lowest price rose. Um, I think this is between $9.99 and $12.99, which goes in line with the Portuguese wine pricing. They're still very mm -hmm. low price because the market is still new um, and people are still getting used to the Portuguese wines. Um, but it, it, there is something that's lacking in this particular wine. Do we want to try some meat or cheese with it? Go See ahead. if it changes. Oh, Go yes, ahead. please. Uh, this you know this is a summer take sausage. Take a cracker with it for the salt content and see if that does, does make, make a difference. It does make a difference. I will try something okay. salty and see. An olive too would be the same thing. Mm -hmm. the salt as, as in most of the t most cases with drinking wine, most of the times food is going to be better with wine. Um, you know, if you love food and you love wine, they obviously go very well together. Um, but I'm a little surprised by this one because I really, I saved this one for last because I really expected this one to be the mm, more powerful. Take your off. Yeah. Not so much. But mm. we get zonker sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is better with food though. I was going to say, I, yeah. I had a salty cracker and it was yeah, a little bit better probably time. because I would have wanted to drink something with my salty cracker. Anyway, I just yeah. think the other three. I don't want to say knock my socks off, but I really liked a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's interesting, though, is that's the highest alcohol content wine on the table yeah, tonight. Yeah. And that's and interesting. It doesn't taste like a high mm -hmm. alcohol no, content. No, not wine. at all. It's not complex. It's, it's, it's so that is one of those. See, that's one of those sneaky Latin wines, just like Latin lovers. It starts off like there's not much going on. <laughs> Are you saying they're and, iffy? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, wow, it's powerful. It's right there because you're drunk. <laughs> because it's, it sneaks up on you. <laughs> so i got to say, for this particular type of color of wine, um, it's it's probably my least favorite on the table tonight. Yeah. It's not bad. Okay, what's your favorite? Mm. I gotta say, for, for my preference, and I almost brought a French rosé mm -hmm. in, but I, you said you were Essie. I'm gonna, Jean Bon Jovi is the, Yes! Jean, uh, Jean, Bon Jovi. Jean Bon Jovi. Jean Bon Jovi. <laughs> Jean bon Jovi. <laughs> Which is surprising because a lot of times people who are in the entertainment field that go into winemaking can be a hit or miss. But he's with 
the guy that makes yeah, the Yeah, he's Gerard Bertrand and so Gerard Bertrand. So it's just Bertrand. his name. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Gerard so Bertrand is, is, is a great winemaker. Producer is good. Yeah. I think he used to be a, a famous soccer player at one time. Really? And that's uh, he, when he uh, stopped playing soccer, he started his winery, mm -hmm. I think about 25 or 30 years ago. But um, fantastic. So Essie brought in something, yes, which we're did. saving to the end, which <laughs> I'm really excited about. Uh, oh, and Essie, okay. I'm going to let you talk about them. Oh, okay. So these are uh, little rosé gummy bears that I make out of rosé wine. And it's a little party favor that works well um, for bridal showers, weddings. And um, they're very easy to make. And you can, I can actually use a sweeter rosé to make this because it, it really doesn't matter um, for, the, for the flavor. It, and I think a sweeter actually makes a better one. Uh, and they're made with simple rosé wine and sugar and gelatin. So these Where do you are get the bowls the little, to make um, Amazon.com. <laughs> um, there was a specialty candy store in Boston that I saw them in a little plexiglass box and it was mm -hmm. like $20 for 10 And my daughter said, oh, you can make those. And boom, next thing you know, I get the little molds in the mail and here they are. They're so cute. Delicious. And I just popped one in my mouth. So it was cute. absolutely phenomenal. Do you have different size molds? Uh, I haven't yeah. gotten the big ones. I think the small ones are enough. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's no, I, that's a great party favor too. I think that's a great. You know what? Out. This is like the wine version of a sh of a jello, jello shot. shot. Yes. Right, right, right. Only much nicer it's more flavor. Sophisticated. Much nicer yeah. flavor. Yeah. Sophisticated. Right. And and I don't think I'm going to fall over after I eat it. No, so no, 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 <laughs> the no, other no. one. <laughs> the alcohol just burns up in, when you cook the wine because. So they're safe for anybody yeah, right. any age. Right. So I, I, I'd I, still I, probably I, refrain from offering it to children. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> I got to say, those were really a pleasant surprise. I know you told me what you were going to bring those, and those are really, really nice. I'm going to try to incorporate those into <laughs> in, in my next party. And uh, I, well, our next minute or so that's left of the show, I, I want to thank all you guys for being on the show. You're welcome. And uh, you know, I know it's always fun to go into a wine tasting like this with some stuff you haven't tasted before. And Essie, thanks for that, John Bon Jovi. I think good. that's really up yes. there on my good, list. Good. It's, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. And uh, Carolyn, thank you again. I know uh, you have thank a busy you. schedule doing your show and. Everything else you do, so I want and to. And we're going to have to have you back again because you're discovering more of our favorites. I am. Also. I, I, I was just telling you, I, I just got started watching the Tudors, and I didn't watch that back when it came out in oh, 2008. Oh, so I'm, I'm getting in there kind of late, but it's been pretty good. Yeah, it, it's worth. It's worth it. It's yeah. worth binge it. watching. Mark. <laughs> and Renee, thank you also for coming in, and uh, sure. your insights have been very helpful and uh, very thank enjoyable. You. Thank you. And, thank uh, you. Uh, really quick, does anybody want one final uh, pour before we sign off? Want to oh, go sure. with the bubbles? Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, sure. Pour right down there. And I want to thank everybody for watching. As we get close to our almost eighth year, this coming Christmas time will be thank our you. eighth oh. year, eighth oh, wow. holiday show. And um, I want to thank all of everybody, all our viewers for watching. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. I'll stop pour that. Okay, sure. And I want to thank WHETV for yet again mm -hmm. another great season. And uh, all my guests, thank you again. Jeez. And it's, uh, Jim, thank you. You're in Italy. Mm -hmm. Come back soon. Until next time, keep all of us in your wine cellar. Cheers. Cheers. Uh -huh.